Ah, welcome back, Whistle Watchers, uh, for our last one this series. Oi, what a great weekend of Six Nations. Congratulations, Ireland, on their second championship win, two years in a row. Let's get into it. Well, we've been looking at the key areas of refereeing during the Six Nations, and there's only one left, the line-out mall. Now, the key thing here for a referee is the setup of the line-out, first of all, and usually, if it's not passed off the top, we have a mall setup. The important thing is here that the mall setup is legal, so no obstruction. When the ball catcher comes down, nobody goes behind him to protect the ball carrier, preventing the defence getting at him. And also, as well, any handout or rip, the ripper must come and get the ball rather than him passing the ball back to ripper, who then usually comes in and causing obstruction as well. It's a very, very difficult area of the game to referee, so it's important the referees keep on top of it. So, Super Saturday, or as we call it here in Wales, uh, March the 16th. Now, even though Ireland had uh, sewed up the championship by beating Scotland in Dublin, it was still a great game with France pipping England 33-31. So let's have a look at the Ben Earl penalty right at the end of the game, which Ramos kicked and France won. Right then, a couple of things here. Now, a lot of you have been talking about players on the ground making a tackle. So if you're on the ground in rugby, you are out of the game but and this is where the interpretation comes in and a little bit of common sense in rugby as well when you're refereeing if your knee hits the ground as you're making the tackle we wouldn't deem that to be that you're already on the ground the difference is imagine you're on your knees on the ground and you're waiting for the ball carrier to run into you then that would be a penalty because you can't be on the ground making a tackle but as if you're going to ground as you're going to make the tackle, then we wouldn't deem that to be illegal. The other key thing to ask here is, is he making the attempt to wrap? Now, this has split a lot of you. Some of you think that the arm is down by the side, so there's no attempt to wrap. If so, then it would be a penalty. If you think well, he's gone down low, and in going down low, he's then going to make the wrap, so then you think it's legal, then it wouldn't be a penalty. So those are the two key things here for you to look at. But this is another point I want you to take into account. When you look at a very, very tough decision like this, you've got to make sure, was it consistent throughout the game? So were there instances in the game that were similar to this and weren't penalised? If so, then you wouldn't expect this to be penalised either. So there you are. Plenty for you to think about, plenty for you to look at. Go and have a look at it. And then come back and let me know what your final decision will be. Deliberate knock on by France in the 44th minute. Uh, Tommy Freeman breaks down the side and then full back Leo Barre. Does he touch the ball or not? Now, the TMO and the referee have looked at this. They don't have any conclusive or clear evidence to say that he definitely touched the ball. If he had touched the ball, then you would probably be looking at a deliberate knock on and a penalty at least. Uh, but because they don't have any clear evidence to say that he did touch the ball, for that reason, then it's a good decision to play on because we have to base it on the clear and the obvious. Let's go to Dublin, when Ireland clinched the championship again against Scotland in a very close game, 17-13. And a shout out as well for Dr. James Robson, Chief Medical Officer for Scotland for more than three decades. Great servant to the game and very worthy of a bit of retirement and putting his feet up. All the best to you. Andrew Porter try is the blocking. Now then, this is a very difficult one again. So, we do have players going in front of the ball carrier here. So, if you felt those two players prevented them getting at the ball carrier and tackling him, then you would have obstruction. But Porter does tend to go out slightly wide and then a tackle is made. So if you felt, well, that doesn't really make a difference because the tackle was made here, then you would have the play on no obstruction. But if you felt, well, they've taken two defenders out and those two defenders could have prevented him scoring the try, then you would have obstruction and a penalty. So in this instance here, the match officials think there wasn't a clear and obvious obstruction here, hence why they've awarded the try. But it is a very, very tight one.
And let's add a little bit on to that one. Um, there is a bit of a question mark around, was the ball actually grounded? Well, the TMO doesn't have any evidence to change the decision or any clear footage, so they award the try. But if you felt that the ball wasn't grounded, then obviously it wouldn't be a try. Harry Byrne, head contact, yellow card. Was it a possible red card? Yes, it possibly was. Um, so we have head contact, uh, which strictly gets to the yellow card threshold. It is then gone to the bunker, and then the bunker look at it and decide there is a low degree of danger in the contact, and therefore it doesn't reach the red card threshold, and the yellow card is correct due to the low degree of danger. And there's one more game, yes. Uh, I was hoping to avoid this. Uh, the Wales game in Cardiff against Italy. Congratulations to Italy. Commiserations for Wales on our first wooden spoon in 21 years. I have to say as well, uh, well done to George North, bowing out on an illustrious career and what a great servant and a great player he's been for Wales over the years. We've been covering every week the key areas of the game that the referees have been looking at. And one of those key areas, uh, of course, was rugby values. So we hear Neil Jenkins come in on the field. He says something to the referee. And can I say that it was brilliantly handled by uh, Maché Renal as well, the referee. If we have the tea carrier or a water carrier coming on to the tea and they say something to the referee with a a little bit of smile on their face or just having a friendly conversation, then that's fine. We don't want to have robots where they come on the field and say nothing. But obviously when we cross that line of trying to tell the referee to referee certain things better or how did you miss that or you need to referee this, then we don't want to see that in the game. Yeah. Elliot D. Dry, carry it over. Oh, now then, this is an interesting one. Right, we saw the Italian prayer grab Elliot who has just been tackled and pulls him over trying to get him on him over the goal line which means he'd be held up and it would be a goal line dropout because of that they get the ball grounded the try is awarded but does Elliot D then commit a second movement does does he illegally propel himself forward before uh, he is held up and carried over if you felt there was a double movement before so he propels himself forward illegally. First of all, that would be the first offence and would be a penalty against Elliot D. But if you think it's just a momentum and then the actual offence is being him being pulled over by the defending player, then the try would stand as it did on the weekend. Now, my favourite part of the week, answering your Emirates fans' questions. Hi Nigel, a big fan of yours. I'm glad you took on uh, dairy farming as a new career. I'm glad that you are a fan of mine, very kind of you, but uh, I'm not dairy, I am beef, hairy for cattle. But never mind, easy mistake to make. Or oh, on that matter, what is your favorite cheese? Oh, I do like cheese. Oh, I'll keep it simple. I'll go for Kafili. Hi Nigel, so I was just listening to the radio and Natasha Beddingfield said, I break tradition sometimes, my tries are outside the lines. Now, how is this possible? Surely the laws of rugby don't allow this. Well, I'm afraid to tell you the laws of rugby actually do allow this. So, imagine you're on the ground or you're on your feet in touching goals. You're not in in goal itself and the ball is on the ground in in goal. When you then put your hand with downward pressure on that ball, you score the try. Even though your feet or your body are outside of the in goal area, we still award the try. When you touch that ball, you are grounding the ball to score the try. That is what you do first. So then it takes into account after that your feet are out and therefore we award the try. Would you consider going into teaching for inspiring referees as I think you could bring so much to the younger generation? Well, that's very, very kind of you. I actually am bringing on the next generations of referees here in Wales because I, I coach few of our young and upcoming uh, referees. So I will be playing a part and I do play a part in hopefully bringing through the next generations of referees here in Wales. Well, that's it. Another series done. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed Whistlewatch as much as I have. Back to work for me. See you soon.